Good morning, and I do mean good morning because it is just after 3.30am and I am absolutely knackered after a day at work today, my normal day job. Um, but it's been quite successful, so I've enjoyed myself and I'm just about to pass on the information. It's Again, it's with regards to Samsung's factory reset protection, um, whereas I've already produced two tutorials um, for the earlier devices. Um, we had the first tutorial which allowed, just showing you how to plug a flash drive into the S5 and to be able able to um, execute a command which allows direct access to Android settings from the initial setup stage. Um, from there we could master reset the phone without any accounts stored on the phone or reported to the Samsung or Google servers and that would inevitably free up the phone for uh, use with any Gmail account. Um, that was soon closed by Samsung. Um, I don't know if it was Samsung or Android, probably in collaboration. Um, and the only other flaw that we could use was uh, along using the device in its initial setup um, alongside Samsung sighting running on my PC that would allow um, immediate access on the device to Samsung online where we can download a file explorer and again um, search the flash drive to uh, use the executable to exploit uh, the, the bypass. Now I'm very happy because I've got Samsung's uh, newest flagship device that's the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 um, this is quite exclusive in the UK. I managed to get mine a few days before release and then before the release date had hit Samsung has actually recalled um, all of the Note 7 with fears of the possibility of the battery exploding under stress. Now I have stress tested uh, my Note 7 um, using the screen on full brightness at 100% with HD video going for a couple of hours and I am happy that the device stays within its optimal temperature and um, I'm just going to take my chance. Um, hopefully I will not have my face blown off or my leg blown off if I'm carrying it in my pocket and nobody will get harmed and if it does blow up then at some stage Samsung should replace it. Um, it's, a, it's a common flaw that's well documented now. Uh, but for now I'm just going to use it as my lab rat. I've already had one test session and it has worked after a lot of failed sessions. Um, it's taken me about six hours to get to this conclusion. Um, so let's go ahead. Now what we need to do is inevitably we're going to create some executable commands uh, and we're going to send them from the PC to the device using this um, USB, standard USB cable. Now I imagine that this um, exploit will work across all of the devices so far and I also feel that this will be um, very usable for, for some future because Android in its in its own right has uh, very elevated privileges which allows it to um, decide whether to um, install or um, allow self-executable files uh, to manifest themselves on the device. So that is done um, by talking through serial and, and the format we do is ASCII. Um, now we can easily do that with a multitude of programs, but the program I use is called a real term. Now real term is in its beta form, so you need to be very careful. And um, I trust the program with my Note 7 after a few sessions. I was a bit worried at first, but now um, I'm comfortable that it does exactly what it should do and what it says on the tin. Now it looks quite overwhelming, but there's not much that we have to change in here. Um, but I'll clearly outline everything in the description also. Um, this is the module window, which uh, it will display any responses from the device that you have connected. And here is the instructables um, through various patterns here. Now what we're going to do is first on the display panel is we're going to uh, request that the information come through in half duplex. Okay, and um, that just allows us to read it easier. Um, then to configure the port, um, we need to know what port uh, we are going to be using to communicate with the device. Now to do that, after connecting with a USB cable and the phone turned on, irrelevant of whether it's in um, initial setup or not, we find the port by hitting the device manager. We can do that by right clicking the computer, um, properties, and then selecting device manager. Okay. Uh, once we're in there, the phone will be connected under um, modems because that's how phones connect. And as we can see, we can see in there Samsung Mobile USB. And if we hit the properties in there on the modem tab, it shall give us the the port that's used. In this case, it is a COM port three. Now close down all the dialogues and the device manager because it does seem to create some conflicts on my system. Well that just went my system alone because it's a little system doing a lot of jobs at the moment. Um, but that's the way that we roll. 
my port is 3 so I shall change it to just 3 um, don't need to put COM3 and then I'm going to open the channel and so you can see that signal that there, there is a, um, a request and a response now after that we go to send box now this, these boxes are where we send the commands from and we can request it, the commands being sent in various formats we've got numeric, alphanumeric um, hexadecimal and ASCII which is the one that we will be sending um, of course Android understands um, most of them all of them in fact uh, but ASCII is a very compressed version and the two commands we use are here which I've just put in this text box so you can see the first one being AT plus CREG question mark backslash R backslash n and that asks the device to um, await for a command and then the ATD12345 semicolon backslash r backslash n that asks the device to auto dial 12345 okay so what I'm going to do is copy the first command and I'm going to enter it into the first dialog box I am only going to use the first box um, because the second box is only used when you're doing multiple commands at once. I'm going to send that as ASCII. As you can see here, we've returned a response from the device. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the second command. Now, as standard, when I got this command, it was ATD112, um, which of course is the UK. Um, emergency services so I just changed it to random one two three four five and it's to the same effect okay so I'm now just going to paste that into the command box now when I click this it will be automatic the phone dialer um, will dial one two three four five and what's important is when you close the dialer or if you don't have a sim card installed um, when the dialer closes within one second for, for a couple of milliseconds the add to contacts button appears at the top of the screen um, and it's important that you need to hit that button and um, therefore gain entry to the contacts so let's go ahead I'm just going to send the command now as you can see it's dialed so I'm going to hang up and then hit add to contact now in the create contact field you'll see at the bottom doesn't matter where you install it at the bottom scan business card now because it's an initial setup um, it, it cannot retrieve the extension so it asks to download the extension from hey, the Samsung site so after accepting the terms and conditions it opens up Samsung and we are going to change and search for a file manager and you can see where this is going but it's not okay so any file manager download and you can it'll ask you to sign in so you can use any credentials to sign in um, so in this case I'm just going to use my normal everyday um, Samsung credentials which haven't been used for a while I've been part of the LG club um, for a year or so now uh, right let's just password this okay and after signing in with any Samsung account it will allow the installation of the file manager um, while we wait for that I shall just show you um, what we the differences are now with what how we handle this file <coughs> initially we could just put it on to a flash drive and install a flash drive and then use um, an APK to allow us access to settings unfortunately if you master reset from in the settings um, using this method um, by using the, the manager to source the file on the flash drive um, if you use the FRP reset it just has no effect whatsoever um, so what floor I use um, is the quick shortcut creator and what that is as a tool is it allows us to um, create direct links to any command um, within Android 
and that's including all the subcommands according to Google account signing. So that's the tool that I'm going to use. Um, this is an advert that, that was come with the, the file manager. What we're going to do is just back to root because um, SD card isn't in this. We need to go to root. Root. Okay. Look for storage, which will open up paths to all the storage. We've got connected SD card. Um, that's a net micro SD card, our emulator storage, encoded emulated for a stor um, safe storage and self which is um, put there by Samsung itself. Now I'm just going to disconnect the USB because the terminal is no longer needed as we have already um, gained access to uh, past the, the initial setup. Okay, now I just need to pop the camera down because I need to now get some access to the flash drive if I pop the camera like that you can see what I'm doing um, where is my flash drive out of interest oh bugger where did I put it sat on it right so um, my device the Note 7 it uses a USB-C so I have a, a USB OTG adapter which allows a direct connection from USB um, now if I plug that into my phone, like in the older versions, um, it doesn't do anything. The older versions used to just pop up where I can manually f find a file. Um, unfortunately now I need to have a file manager which is important why we need to access the Samsung site. Okay, so now um, if I go into storage I'm just going to back out to SD card again. Uh, back. Because it has now changed because I plugged um, a further um, flash drive in so I'm going to hit storage again and you can see it's clicked up here uh, in my folders it's in tools and I am going to use um, device fixing me is Android Samsung quick shortcut maker APK now this is purposefully not download from Samsung or play because I want to um, activate the allow unknown sources um, just in case I need another side-by-side -side pro program to be installed um, this is important where you need to see so if you need to bring the camera down to the screen um, this is very important that you get the right section um, once we are here um, we need to open quick shortcut creator now I need that to focus in what well, it does this is Quick Shortcut Maker and it, it compiles a list of every single command and path on Android. Now what we're going to do is quickly look for um, Google and there where I stopped is Google Account Manager opens up loads of sub folders and here we have type email and password for Gmail okay when you select that it brings up this screen here and we select try the try takes us back to ask us for the pre previous users password okay if we hit the options browser sign in okay to allow link now it asks for an email now this is my second email so this is the email that's not registered to the device not my Samsung account, this is my Gmail ok then it will ask you for password um, again it's any credentials but the password has to match the, the email address obviously ok ok now we've done that what we can do is uh, just allow my Wi-Fi to connect
unfortunately Google Account Manager has stopped. Okay, so if I back out, back to the settings. the settings back one page and there we go we can now progress through the um, initial setup